Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is hydrochloric acid. Um, hydrochloric acid is one of the acids, it's an acid actually, it's pre present in your tummy. I hope I'm, the biologist is going to tell me I'm pointing to the wrong place for a tummy. Um, but it's in your tummy and it helps, helps, digest, um, helps digest food. Hydrochloric acid is also a very, very important industrial acid, so it'll be used in lots of industrial processes. Um, and we also use it in the lab for various things. Unlike most of the chemicals I talk about, I can be absolutely sure that every person watching has a sample of hydrochloric acid with them as they watch. Because hydrochloric acid is found in everybody's stomach. And if you remember back to school, um, one of the reactions of acids was, was acids reacting with metals. And that should give us a salt of some sort um, and hydrogen. So we're going to hopefully react a metal, which is whoa, it's really heavy, <laughs> which is zinc metal. Okay, and we're going to react this with our hydrochloric acid, which is set there, and hopefully get some hydrogen out of this, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll light it with a lighted splint. A new biography has just been written of the very famous physicist Paul Dirac, won Nobel Prize, and was perhaps one of the greatest geniuses of the 20th century. And apparently, according to this biography, he suffered from very bad indigestion particularly towards the end of his life. And it was solved by a doctor suggesting to him that he should drink orange juice with some hydrochloric acid in it. Not very strong, because it would have burnt his, but when he drank this, apparently his digestion calmed down and he was much happier. Now, fortunately for most of us, we don't need to drink acid, and most people have too much acid and so when they get indigestion, they swallow a mild um, alkali, magnesium oxide, something like that, to calm down the acidity. Yeah. Yeah. Some fumes coming out of this. Here we go. Good old McDonald's cheeseburger. Okay, so we're going to leave our burger to digest for a while in the acid. Hydrochloric acid with HCl is actually a gas. It has a boiling point which is much lower than hydrogen fluoride. This is quite surprising to chemists because usually molecules that are heavier, chlorine is heavier than fluorine, boil at lower temperatures. But HF, hydrogen fluoride, has strong bonds between one fluorine and another through the hydrogen, so-called hydrogen bonding, and HCl, the, bond, H, the hydrogen bonding is weaker, so it has a lower boiling point. This is Graham, my, my, my glamorous assistant, and I think he's going to hold some stuff, so I think I need more than one hand for this. So, Okay, so this is concentrated hydrochloric acid, so you could probably see, is it fuming now? It does fume a little bit, and this is why, again, we're using a fume cover today. Um, because you don't want to breathe in hydrochloric acid fumes. Um, they're not very good for your lungs and they make you cough anyway as well. So hopefully we'll pour a little bit in without getting it everywhere. Do we think that's enough? Probably. Okay, so we've got a spatula with a bit of zinc metal in it and we're going to put it into the um, into hydrochloric acid and what it'll do is it'll effervesce and that's because we're getting hydrogen given off. So the hydrogen gas will be given off with any luck. That's too much, isn't it? It's too much. So it's a gas, but the hydrochloric acid in your stomach and in bottles in the lab is actually HCl gas dissolved in water. And the more you dissolve in the water, the stronger the acid. And if you have it really strong, then, for example, when you mix it with nitric acid, you get the so-called aqua regia, king of the acids, and you can dissolve gold. And if you remember back to school, um, a test for hydrogen gas is a lighted splint and it should pop because the hydrogen is going to react with the air, uh, the oxygen in the air, and we're going to get a little bit of a pop. This is just if I can use this now, today. Is that lit? Okay. Watch me scream like a girl. Yep. And it did nothing. That is rubbish. rubbish. 
rubbish. Oh, why didn't it do anything? What did you do wrong? I don't know. I just put some more in. It's uh, ooh, t three and a half hours. So we're going to see what happens to a tasty McDonald's cheeseburger after three and a half hours of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Okay. Ooh. Oh my God. <laughs> I think it's absolutely disgusting. <laughs> HCl was known long before chlorine was known as an element. Originally, it had a rather fascinating name. It was called muriatic acid. And chemistry is a very conservative subject. And people still talk about muriatic acid. A few minutes ago, I was looking on the internet. There's an article using muriatic acid for cleaning your masonry. So, Chemists, when they have a name or something like that, they often like to keep it because it's their old friend and they want to keep going using that name. We're going to need a bigger boat, in the words of, in the words of Roy Scheider. Um, hopefully, um, this, this will catch it better. That's the plan. We did, use a, we did in our practice, use a big one. So, so maybe it's time for the big guns. That's better. <laughs> the big flask. Well, we saw the cheeseburger, and that's all fine and well, it being soft tissue, soft flesh and uh, bun, but we actually wanted to give it a go with uh, something harder, something more substantial. So uh, using a regular well-known auction site, I managed to purchase uh, a skull, a goose skull, and we're going to use that and uh, see how hydrochloric acid reacts with that.